And the Nasdaq, well, it's back for now, at least major outperformer in the month of July, still lagging on the year. Uh, Dan Niles, I know what you're going to say. This is another bear market rally. You have been negative on tech all year. That doesn't mean that there's not opportunities, though. And this quarter told us, though, this, this isn't really the nuclear winter that some had feared a week ago. Well, I mean, don't confuse the stock price action with the fundamentals, because if you go through all the companies, they pretty much, for the most part, all missed the numbers came down. Some of the stocks rallied, but that had more to do with where you were. Yeah. Snapchat blows up, Google's next, it goes up, and Facebook goes with it. But then Facebook comes the next day, it goes down, right? So there, it's more because of that. It felt like there was at least one kind of rare reacceleration story this quarter, and that was Amazon. Absolutely. Would you agree with that? I mean, they kind of took their medicine. They took billions of dollars in costs. They, it kind of feels like they're ready for the second half, at least positioned against some of the others in the space. Well, yeah, we actually put out a tweet on this about two weeks ago, I want to say, saying, look, you know, last year, Prime Day, their revenues were up about 8 percent. They put out the numbers. It looked like it was up about 18 percent. So we bought a ton of it. We, it was 15 percent of our, our portfolio at one point. Where it ran up, you know, it was up like 10 percent at least. We got rid of it because we're like, we've got a massive gain. Let's take it. But that's the way we handle risk. We don't want to be big into earnings. We typically size down, especially if it's had a big run in the direction and then we resize it again afterwards. Right, and you were actually on CNBC at the start of the week Monday. It feels about a million years ago right <laughs> it now. It does, totally. Um, <laughs> but you were, had a lot of short positions going mm -hmm. into this week. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it wasn't as bad as many feared. And you, even though the fundamentals, you could argue, weren't that great, you did see big gains from Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Apple. Yep. Yeah, and you did. I mean, so for us, it was, again, timing-related. When Snapchat came out, Stock was down 39 percent, took the entire space down. We went ahead, and we have a tweet on this, we covered a bunch of our shorts in the ad tech space. So for us, Google was literally a 15 percent short in the portfolio. The day that they reported, it was two. Right. So for us, Google made a lot of money for us this month. And so it's trying to size your positions appropriately. And the day of earnings, it gets tricky because maybe you own Snapchat. Or maybe you own Google, but, you know, do you own Roku or do you own one of the other names? So some of this is just, there's such high volatility. If mm -hmm. you don't make money in particular, and I know we'll get into Uber and Lyft later, yeah. and you miss, you could have a massive problem in this take. I know, and a lot of what you do is risk management. So you are constantly trading in and out of positions, shorts and longs, or betting against the market. Yeah. Um, we were chatting a little earlier before the show, and what's interesting is you actually did see some opportunity in this week. You picked up shares of Meta and Intel. If I were to yeah. name two of the worst reports this week, it yeah. would be those two. What do you say? Absolutely. But here's the thing that people forget. Companies have problems at different times, and sometimes it's a precursor to what's going to happen. If you think of Amazon, they've been missing four quarters in a row of revenues up until this one. That's why we got massively long. I look at Intel, and I expected numbers to come down. We got out of it before the print. We owned it for the Chips Act. We actually own Global Foundries right now, which I know you'll talk to yeah. that CEO later. But, you know, with Intel, we got out. It dropped 9 percent. Global Foundries was up 9. We took a little bit out of our Global Foundries position, bought a little bit of Intel, because the numbers now actually look like they can probably get to them, and the multiple's quite a bit lower. Well, okay, let me push back a little bit on this Intel call. We had Pat Gelsinger on Tech Check this morning, and, you know, we, he was pretty candid, actually. He said, you know, the blame sort of rests on me. This was not a good quarter. We have to do better. But he's been so bullish since he took the position 18 months ago. And what I hear from analysts, too, is that he's lost some credibility. How can you believe that this is a bottom now just because he's telling you so? He's been bullish all the way down. Well, you got to remember, I've been bearish on Intel all the way down, right. right? You've never had me on Tech Check where I've said anything bullish about those forecasts. And, you know, we've had responses on Twitter where, like, we don't think they can make the numbers. And if you remember, our two big calls and earnings were you're going to have problems in the, P the pandemic beneficiaries, PCs and smartphones. Qualcomm missed. We also were on Monday saying we think Apple's probably OK. We actually owned it was our last position. But we have another problem in the ad tech space. And so a lot of these things are going to continue. But Intel missed the numbers by 15 percent on the revenues. Yeah. They took down the next quarter by 17. So. <laughs> You kind of go, at a certain point, it's, okay, now this is looking reasonable relative right. to expectations of guys that have yet to report that are coming that could be absolute train wrecks. And that's